So I finally found a way to do dead short testing. So first we put a breaker or fuse that we want to test and then these go to a large battery bank. And this thing is massive, 30 kilowatt hours, super dangerous. So first let's turn them all on and then we have a massive knife switch. This is the only way I can do this. I was using a relay before and the arc fried them. And then I used a disconnect switch and it fried that too. So a knife switch with a big rope standing far away is the only way I can do it. And right now it's live, so let's test it out. And it actually worked, it tripped the breaker. That single large breaker tripped the entire battery bank. That is insane. Now this battery does not have overcurrent protection. So let's see if it will trip. But it's only 12 volts, so the arc is pretty small. Three, two, one. No, it didn't. Now the last battery did not have overcurrent protection, but it has over temperature. And I think we actually hit it with that one, unfortunately. So this, this is raw cells. Super dangerous. So let's try to trip it with this instead. Three, two, one. It tripped! It finally tripped! And this was with 12 volts. Something to realize is the BMS itself is quite a bit of resistance to thousands of amps. When you have the raw cells, then you can pull ridiculous current numbers. Now MCCBs and T-class fuses have a breaking amperage capacity rating of 20 to 25,000 amps. But the small T-class fuses are only rated for 10,000 amps. Before we do this test, I realized if we cannot trip this one, with 30 kilowatt hour battery bank, we're not hitting the braking capacity of any of these. It makes for a good show because we have a massive arc and the inrush is pretty massive. I bet for a millisecond, it's a few thousand, but to create 20,000 amps that will continuously feed into that arc is almost impossible with these small systems. Now these have a much lower limit, like 1,000 to 2,000 amps. So these might actually fail because 10,000 amps is very hard to create with any of these batteries, but let's test it anyways. This is still a very strenuous test. It worked. Now we're gonna test all of these pretty quickly, so let's get started. So that last test actually broke this breaker in a closed position, and it's overheating, it's probably gonna melt. So first, let's give it 300 amps. If I open or close it, it's still connected. The current is still flowing. 300 amps, guys, super dangerous. And it's getting really hot really fast. We're already at 290 degrees. 296, 300, 305, 307, 310, and I just hit the limit of this heat camera. And this is rated for 48 volts, but the braking capacity is very low and you can destroy it very easily. We need to turn this off before it melts. All right, moving on to the next one. It did not trip, that's crazy. But these tripped first, that is crazy. Everything looks good, let's try it one more time. And still it did not trip. 300 amps. Oh, it tripped. So this one just disconnected, but the reset arm is not flipping out. So let's try it one more time. 300 amps start. There we go. Why did it not work the first time? That was strange. Now it's working properly. Perfect. All right, so this one survived. Final test, raw cells, 12 volts. So less voltage, smaller arc, but more current, and it tripped it perfectly. And I can't believe this did not trip with the 48 volt, 30 kilowatt hour pack. Those BMSs are limiting it a lot. And the arc I'm producing now is destroying the knife switch and everything I've used before it. And a lot of 12 volt batteries that do not have overcurrent protection, it's really hard to get over 600 or 800 amps because these wires heat up and the resistance increases. Raw cells can produce thousands of amps, but carrying thousands of amps and pushing it through a small BMS 
is very difficult. So these are fantastic, but probably complete overkill. Anyways, let's try to break some more 12 volt breakers. I thought this video would be quick and easy, but there's so many issues coming up. I could make a raw cell 48 volt battery, but I don't want to be near that thing. I could put a breaker like this in series and then this will trip first, but the knife switch to connect that is going to blow up. It's going to throw copper everywhere. I don't know. This is a tough test. This is very difficult. If you're worried, just spend more money and get the good stuff and you'll be fine. Now this thing is dangerous. This is a knockoff AMG. I've only been able to trip these with a dead short, even 300 amps continuous through 150 amp fuse and it would not trip. So let's see what happens. New switch installed. So this fuse did not trip. That is crazy. So we have a really nice arc, but it's not that much current. Let's just try one of these and see what happens. And this one didn't trip either. So yeah, we need more current. 30 kilowatt hour battery with BMS is not enough. So it has come to this 88 kilowatt hour battery and we're gonna do a dead short. Each of these batteries can output 200 amps, but the surge is crazy high. But this is ridiculously dangerous. So we're actually gonna put this in series just in case. We could get a shock wave and lots of copper flying in every direction or vaporized copper, but we should get some good results. So let's get started. This thing's a beast, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Now the limit on current for each battery's bus bar is 500 amps. And then we have two watt cables connecting the batteries. So the current will be limited to some degree, but not by much for that first millisecond. We should get a lot of current. I don't think anybody's home system is going to generate this much current. So this is a good test. You really would need some very large cables and a massive bus bar to generate thousands of amps. I actually feel nervous right now. <laughs> Now for this test, I'm gonna be outside the building behind a steel wall. So yeah, here we go. This thing didn't trip. This didn't trip. We still have voltage. I am so confused. All right, let's try it one more time. This might be hard to believe, but in the last test, I heard this thing beep and restart. And it's because the batteries caught it and they shut down but they turned back on and then I detected voltage and I was like, what the heck's going on? And then I did it again and I checked the voltage and it was below one volt. So all of these batteries actually caught it and turned themselves off. Also realize the thermal breaker on the batteries did not trip. It was the BMS that caught it. And those work a lot faster than a thermal breaker. If the BMS fails in a closed position, then this breaker will trip. And that means that you need to replace this battery. But if the BMS catches it, it will catch it fast and then it can reset itself. And then a few seconds later, it reset and we have voltage again. And the arc is smaller than the 30 kilowatt hour bank. So this is worse. So I have to make a battery with raw cells or I'm not gonna get good current. Any battery with a BMS, it's really hard to pull from. Also, there wasn't much smoke and the arc was pretty small. Usually it's a loud bang. This one was super quiet. But this really shows that it's really hard to hit that breaking capacity limit, like on these things. With these little cables, with BMSs, with small supply conductors, is very hard. For example, this one's 500 volts and 20,000 amps of breaking capacity. And it has to supply it for a few seconds at least. And I was not expecting this result. I thought this would be a really fun test and it was, but yeah, I can't really break much. We broke the cheap one, but that's not very surprising. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and try to think of another way. I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.